All right, we are live again. Hello and welcome back to Bendy in the Dark Revival. Can I go back to get through that bullshit? What? Hmm. What's actually over there? Let's try and go through that door first. I really don't feel like backtracking. I really don't. <laughs> Your mom is condemned. Alright, it's opened. Deep six level badge required beyond this point. Wait. Oh, this one I can go back up later, but I haven't found the other. Really? That didn't really do much. Kind of surprising, actually. Bendy. Hey, I remember you. Haha, uh -huh, tea bag. <clears throat> Can I not jump up this? There we go. Pull the lever. <laughs> Subject 418. <coughs> what the hell is that? Subject 414. Is that Henry? About the keepers, Wilson, the cycle, anything could help. What's your name? Audrey. Sounds like Henry, but warped. What's yours? Honestly, I've almost forgotten. <sighs> Henry. My name is Henry. Yep. Have you been a prisoner long? Very long. The think you're a threat to their plans. Forever. Still, it's given me time to think. Things like, if you haven't eaten in years, you might not be human. Yeah. Why would you be a threat to them? I'm what they call a cycle breaker. Once upon a time, I knew how to start the <clears throat> cycle over. And when that happens, everything begins again. Completely new. Obviously, Wilson and the Keepers don't want that to happen. How did you do it? Reset the cycle. Turns out the Ink Demon himself is the key. This world is his, but even he must obey its rules. For now at least. If you can get him to look at something very specific, it will reset everything. What is it? It's just a reel of food. Yep. Labeled with the words, the end. I can see it in my mind. Every day, they keep it upstairs in the pit. I'll see if I can break in and steal it. Maybe if I reset the cycle, we could make things better for everyone here. Maybe. And what about you? I just want to go home. Good luck with that. So did I. <clears throat> Good luck, Audrey. If you need me again, you know where to find me. Oh, 
climb up. What the heck? Okay. Um. Oh. The pit. Security lock. Hey, I remember that thing. Contraband. What's in here? Is this porous? Are you worthy to walk with angels? Hmm. Inspect milk. Icky. Milk memory. There's always hope. Press the button. Is this? Oh, it's a keeper. Um, I want to try and move. Is this a story thing, or did I just die? Or it could be like Dark Souls with Seathen, where it's both. Creepy bastard. You did this to me. You brought me here. Turned me into this this thing. This doesn't make sense. I've never done anything to you. Open your eyes and look around you. None of this makes sense. Drawn <clears throat> walls, nightmarish creatures. Yeah. An ancient studio that died out almost thirty years. Ancient? Ago. It's all fiction, utter nonsense. And yet, in here, it exists. It breathes. It flourishes. Reality, guided by its master's pin. The foundation for a new reality. We can bleed into our own. Just think of it. Anything we create in here, we can release mm -hmm. out there. But first, this world must be controlled. Fendi. Made safe. These things, these angels and demons, are they really life? Mm. Are they just fantasy? Stains. Okay. Old mistakes ready to be cleansed away for newer, greater things. What do you want from me? 
Good question. I need your help to save my father's life. Your father? But this is our star. We'll talk more once we're safely inside. Complete chapter four. Chapter, chapter five, the dark revival. All right, we're getting near the end here. Yeah, I kind of need that. Signal towers nearby. Abilities have been disabled. Great. Yeah, power disabled. Can't go through there. It's a good thing I did get some stamina upgrades since I can't use powers here. I can't get stamina replenished while I read, really. Ever since a terrible crash a few years back, people don't like to hang around. Too many strange things keep happening on this platform. Last week, one of the railmen told me they had reports of some train going through that wasn't on schedule. There were figures standing in the cars, staying through the windows, but never stopped to let one, no one off. Just kept going on straight through. Some say it was the Silver Lane Express, the train that crashed. Kitty Thompson. <laughs> Let me open the door a bit to get some airflow. to spread. This woman has begun to shudder. <coughs> Be quiet. Mr. Ink did Demon, you did try and kill nothing. me. It was nothing. Hmm. Almost there. Just a quick stop. Won't take but a moment. Come on, really? One, he didn't kill the ink demon. Two, definitely he's a liar, so. The subject will stand in the designated location. Oh, great. Fine. Hey, there's a Tommy gun here. Remain still for examination. Things are so obnoxious. The subject is cleared for entry. Welcome to the civilized world. Hmm? They nullify the ink demon's powers so he cannot pass them. I wish I could say I invented them, but it seems our friends at the Gent Corporation had a demon problem of their own long ago. Maybe. Wow, Wilson. Uh, hello. Ma'am? Now 
Oh, my dear. If you'll excuse me, I have a lot to prepare. We'll talk later, I promise. Besides, you must be very tired. A quick rest will do you good. Betty will show you to your room. She's my housekeeper, among other things. Other things. Never actually killed the ink demon, did you? No, he's too powerful to destroy. So we sealed <clears throat> him away, <clears throat> trapped him in a different form. One that was smaller, harmless. Bendy. Mm -hmm. It was a fitting prison, although he seems to have found a way to free himself. But enough talk. We'll deal with that <sighs> soon enough. There's some nice fresh blankets all laid out for you. You'll be dreaming in no time. Wait, Wilson? One more thing. If you needed my help, why didn't you just ask? <laughs> Would you have believed me? Fair point. Come along, and no more dawdling. This way now. You got some distance. You're here at last. It's so exciting finally having you with us. Now, to give you some bearings, we're currently standing in the south wing. Wilson's laboratory is downstairs, and then there's the north wing. Okay. The ink demon got in there a while ago, and ever since, we've had to keep the north wing locked up tight. I'm afraid it's fallen into ruins by now. All those juicy, lovely books gone to waste. Only keepers go there these days. And they'll tear you apart limb from limb if Wilson isn't with you. So, mind your distance and you'll be just fine. Okay. It's not very often I have to look after. I wonder why that would be. I can actually talk to. Almost everyone here either can't speak or they're completely mad. All right, here we go. All right, here we are. Best room in the house. You should see where I sleep. Ooh. <laughs> but this room, oh, just perfect. I saw to every detail. Bed is clean. The bathroom is on the left. Sorry about the stains. I did try my best to get them out. The Mug and the Maiden, Volume 1 by Sir Wilton Moore. Chapter 1, The Dangerous Force. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a mug of cheese. It was not an ordinary mug of cheese you might find in a home or kitchen of the age. No, this mug of cheese was a distant son of one of the three Grand Flagon Kings. The same kings who had charged on horseback to defend their capital city during the unforgettable conquest of the previous century. To which of these Flagon Kings he hailed from, the mug was unsure. But still, there was an honor and courage in his heart. <laughs> His family line heralded of deeds long past that had forever changed the course of Stu history. Do you have a name? Of course. All mugs of cheese have names. This is common knowledge, just as every fruit bat is really named Stanley. The mug of cheese was named Richter the Cracked. What a name, I can hear you say. Cracked indeed. The mug of cheese bears no damage that I can see. Fall silent, you small-minded bass. For the therein lies your our intriguing story. Let's begin at the beginning. It was a hot winter day in the forest, one of those days where everything was dull brown. The lake was still, the birds had shut up, and the trees were with sticks in the overcast sky. Save for a lone pine that trimmed the clouds above a painter's above like a painter's brush. It was on this day that Mr. Darblemouse was in a hurry. He had been named as Vermin of the Year by a Society of Brethren, but Society of Brethren that lived under the old church. And it was customary that the honoree to bring one fine to bring fine port wine cheese to the ceremony. Only hours to locate some of the precious cuisine. Fortunately, Mr. Darble Mouse knew exactly where to find it. The dark cellar below the governor's castle. But unfortunately, as he approached the loose plank of wood in the old wall, he failed to realize that the heavy rains that had come during the night had passed moisture into the plank, making it far heavier than usual. Thus, when he pushed on the plank with all his might, he lifted just enough to push his body only halfway through, but he just couldn't contend with all the weight of the plank and his arms failed. The plank snapped back down, crushing him flat.
After all this story is not about the mouse, or if, have you gotten about the cheese already? You can see how you might connect the two. Mr. Darrow Moss was, after all, looking for the cheese. We were talking about a mug of cheese just before. Sadly, it must inform that there is no relation between Richter the Cracked and the Roan, who is not nothing more but smushed guts inside a wall. Except that there is, for it was the death of Mr. Darble Mouse that started all the trouble. You see, when things die, they didn't smell, and that's just what Mr. Darble Mouse did. But that's not all. His body, pinned between the outside and inside the wooden wall, made a perfect passage for the hot winter wind. The wind therefore carried the stench of his decaying mouse carcass deeper into the governor's home. Like a snaking, twisting wisp of hair, smell settled in the little tavern near the courtyard of the castle. Here, soldiers would spend many long hours. I'm sorry, uh, distracted like a dum dum. Many long hours where there's no bloodless to soothe with battle. Strong ales and red meats filled the menu from back to the front at this rustic, medieval, greasy spoon. Mostly the customers came to look upon the barmaid in Maxine, who's actually named Rita. Rita was, by far, the best looking creature in all the governor's county. There was a beautiful deer woman just over the hill, but no one knew that. Okay? By day, Rita scrubbed her tavern so clean you could eat off it, which was so f which was fortunate as it was a place you indeed could be eating, since it was a tavern. By <laughs> day, she served her customers with charm, grace, but mostly with drinks. Did I mention that Rita was married? Well, I'm mentioning it now. Rita was married. Her husband's name was James. He didn't do much. Until he died. The smell of Mr. Darl Mouse knocked him flat, and that, my friends, was that. Oh dear, the story's brother began to already killed two major characters. Needless to say, Rita was deeply distressed by the whole thing, but playing herself man's later, she realized she couldn't mourn forever and went to buy some cheese. Uh, yes, don't worry, dear reader. This time the mention of cheese will probably guide us something, meeting our local, <laughs> guide us to meet our local hero of the terror. Hell, ah. Also, it's a good time to start a new chapter. Re-enter the cheese shop with her guns blazing. I'm speaking metaphorically, yada yada. It was because just night before James was taking a weird smell in the room. He said, "Mented delicious new connection, a cheddar cider Con uh, concoction." Was sure to be hit with her patience. After all, the governor's county had only two exports, cheese and grapes. She couldn't possibly make a drink from a grape. Back to the cheese chops shop scene. Rhea knocked on the counter loudly, with her fist causing the nearby cat to do absolutely nothing as cats do. From behind the wall, she heard a stir as someone was crashing through piles of cheese to make their way around her. Merging gloriously from torn yellow curtains, an old man came into the view. He was giant in stature with long, long gray beard. Bobbing along and stuck with his beard were all manner of cheese crumbs and wedges, but wrapped tightly within his hairs. But yet, he held even more cheeses on ropes pulled across his chest, with loops of provolone linked like sausages over his shoulder. His eyes were big and his ears were bigger still. A smile of kindness erupted from his face as he looked locked eyes with Rita. My, my, the curds are kind to me this hour. Hello and welcome, he bellowed. Rita bowed low and promptly began to cry. Shop owner looked at her perplexed. What did I say wrong? The barmaid sniffed and snooted and finally answered. Forgive me, for my husband has just died and I'm out of Swiss. I'm going to pause now in the story to ask myself why Mr. Rubble Mouse went to the cellar of the girl's house for cheese. There was a cheese shop nearby. I think it's best we overlook this glaring problem in the plot, don't you? Now back to the story at hand. Rita purchased a large amount of cheese from the shop owner. She brought cheese wheels and cheese melts and cheese slices. She brought cheese whistles and cheese bread. She brought cheese paper and cheese sandwiches. She brought so much cheese and in fact she lost track of all she had obtained, just dumped all the fromage <laughs> into a large burlap sack for the return journey to the tavern. Goodbye, Rita, the shop owner called as he waited farewell. Goodbye, Daniel, she called back. His name was Murray, by the way. Overburdened by her treasures, Rita made her way home, following the main road to the castle. <clears throat> but as always happens, the road was now under repair. A man with a skinny mule was plowing up the dirt so he could put down new cobblestone. Four of his associates were standing by watching him. Job would take a few years to finish, but Rita was in a hurry, so she followed the detour sign that led her to take a different road to her left. Fortunately, no one could read the in the governor's country, so she went right instead. The mishap took her deep into a forest where absolutely nothing of interest happened, except something of interest did happen. I kind of hate the storytelling here. I guess it's meant to be like ironic and everything, or gonna like you can kind of hit that kind of note too much, and it just gets kind of tedious. She chomped through the forest, her sack of cheese weighing her down, muttering complaints all the way. Little did she know that danger lay just ahead. Danger was cunning and dangerous, and had one of those out-of-place eyebrows hairs that drives you nuts when you're talking to someone who has one. The danger we will call Bernard, the big, ugly lizard man who wears a blue cloak. Bernard didn't often have visitors in his house. That's because he lived outside. Also, he was rather fond of human flesh, which made him very unpopular. So obviously, you can see the drama unfolding here. The beautiful but tired Rita huffing and puffing up the wine path as she approaches a certain doom. Bernard, watching from behind a nearby tree, licking his lips. 
Oh, the tension is tense, is it not? At this point in time, let's pause again to ponder all the possibilities that can happen now in our story. Two characters have died already. Surely a third won't hurt anything. Or perhaps just reading the story because you want to see how who will get the next axe next. Your heart a little warped. You know that? Well then, let's see what happens next. Bernard stepped from behind his hiding place, his eyebrow hair gleaming in the fading sun. Dear madam, why must you pass through so fast? He called with his eyes glimmering. I must get home, Bernard. Because for one, it's getting late and I have customers to serve. And for second, because you eat people, Rita replied. Poppycock, balderdash, cult swallow up. I won't hear these lies against my character, he detested. For I, Bernard the big, ugly lizard man who wears a blue cloak, have completely reformed myself. You have? Rita squinted suspiciously at him. Bernard put a hand to his heart. I have. I no longer prowl or pounce. I won't attack or bounce. I will not kill or maim or fear. I won't crush him and bite him more. I promise I won't devour any more. My gosh, you've become a bore. There aren't going to be the danger in the story that I've come all this way with 100 pounds of cheese for nothing, Rita grumbled. She boosted her sack further up her shoulders and turned with an angry grunt. But Bernard waved after her in panic. Wait, it's all a ruse. I intended to eat you, dear woman. I swear it. It's all a trick. You see, a new angle. It worked on some guy yesterday. Oh, please stay. Rita sighed. Her strength is about to give long, give about gone, <laughs> just about gone from the long adventure she had taken from since she left home that morning. She turned back to face Bernard. All right, she said, but your part in the story barely lead to an unexpected turn of events. Oh, it will. Bernard clapped and wiggled his clawed finger, motioning her jaw near. Just wait till the next chapter. This is sunk fa cost fallacy, like in front of your very eyes. Yada yada. <clears throat> Two mugs of cheese came. <clears throat> it was Dave. Second one was Richter. Richter spent his early life stealing cowbells and putting them on skunks. So people always knew when danger was nearby. Needless to say, Richter was one smart mug of cheese. The all could not remain perfect forever, and suddenly the great skunk famine began. Richter found his world in array, and he sought a new purpose. Fortunately, there was an opening in the governor's county for an adventurer at the time. Since he was descendant of the three flagging kings, he was boosted to the head of the line. Because we are quite well aware, even in olden times, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Thus the adventures of Richter began. He braved deep dungeon, he slayed great beasts, he climbed the highest mountain peaks, he sailed around the world despite the fact they didn't own a boat. Richter was truly the stuff of legend. They mentioned the curse? Oh yes, fair leaders, there's a curse. A fiendish and terrible curse. One morning while Richter was in governor's county, he came upon a witch named Witch. The witch had just pulled a pound cake from her oven, where she then proceeded to start ingesting it, right there in front walk on her home. Once, Richter knew this creature was pure evil. Eating cake this early in the morning, and without ice cream? This is truly a fiend that needed to be vanquished. <sighs> Richter jumped the fence and pulled his sword. Would you like some pound cake, the witch offered? It looked quite delicious. Richter would not let himself be seduced into early morning cake. So he approached closer with his weapon at her throat. The witch began to sweat with a mouthful of crumbs. I'll also make a mean scone if you want to wait. Now no gentleman or gentle monk could refuse a good scone. So Richter withdrew his sword and patiently waited for the witch to create these new buttery pastries. But what he didn't know is that the witch accidentally had bumped her table and added within the mixture a vial of cursed liquid. See, I told you there was a curse. You were fair warned. The moment Richter ate the scones, he fell into a deep sleep. The witch, baffled, finished her cake and proceeded to get a civil service job in a nearby town. <laughs> Probably the best bit in all this. As years rolled by, all that remained in the witch house was carried off by the elves, and their garden became overgrown. They left only Richter asleep in the forest with no end to his dreaming in sight. But the story thankfully did not end there. For his liquid habit, a giant man covered in cheese, with big eyes and big ears, wandered past the sleeping mug. In case you forgot, this cheap shop owner, Murray, sometimes called Bill, unable to <laughs> resist cheese of any kind, even a mug of the stuff, Murray took Richter in shop and set him on a shelf. Here Richter sat for many years until this very fateful day. You see, in Rita's haste to gather up all the cheese that she had purchased, she had swept a few things that did not belong to her in her sack as well. Some included the cat on the counter, a personalized pen, Murray's cash box, I think she'll be hearing about this one eventually, and last but not least, Richter himself still deeply asleep. So now that our two stories have come together, let's discover what happened to Rita next to Rita and Richter in the climax chapter. In that same hot winter day in the forest, and Mrs. Darble Mouse was finally starting to get concerned. Just on the road, Rita was being drawn toward an almost certainly bloody and horrific end of her life. <sighs> Bernard was just moments away from take, 
He her with his lizard jaws, mere hours from trimming his eyebrows. <laughs> Rita stood her ground. She was no damsel in distress, but simply a person who was pretty good darn tired by this point. She pulled the burlap sack of cheese from her body and swung it hard with every last bit of strength he had left in her. An ear shattering crack broke through the silent trees and the bag made contact with Bar Bernard's shocked face. His teeth flew in all directions, falling like pebbles to the ground. His eyeballs dislodged and rolled into a, near rolled into a nearby stream. His jawbone turned completely around and planted itself in the back of his head. Bernard ran screaming into the woods, never to be seen again this week. His cry had faded into the forest once again, fell soft and quiet. A cow walked by. Rita, still standing with her sack outstretched in her arms, stood wide-eyed at what just happened. Truly no cheese in her bag was as hard for that kind of impact. As she placed her burlap sack upon the dirt and peeled it open, she was made to find Richter, a mug of cheese, inside long quite dazed. He had awakened and the curse was finally lifted. Somewhere behind a desk, the witch looked up and nodded with a smile. But oh dear reader, look. Look what was now upon his mug body. A giant and elegant crack. The very mark of a warrior. His hero's journey was finally complete. Richter the Cracked had emerged. Is it true that Richter really didn't do anything important in the attack on Bernard? Despite Richter being where he was at a perfect time, he had saved Rita. The fates were with them. Richter and Rita had laughed and ate cheese until the sun went down. Finally, they packed their picnic and headed back to the tavern where they met with cheers of excitement. They were met with cheers of excitement. Most because the guys had found out that Rita was now single. <laughs> As the night wore on to the early morning of the hours, the tavern remained alive in the castle courtyard with singing, dancing, and cheddar cider. Oh, what a celebration. But like all parties of such proportion, eventually everyone sobers up and you have to go home. Before long, it was dawn. The sun began to rise steadily in the west, marking a fresh adventure on the horizon. The wind of a new direction began to blow with a more steady pace. It skirted across the ground and found its way between the floorboards of the governor's, the governor's castle. Here, against all odds, it found the barely remaining body of Mr. Torrible Mouse. The wind carried the stench far beyond the borders of the castle, or the mountains, and deep within dark cave where evil slept. What the hell is that smell? said evil, waking with hellfire behind his burning eyes. Eventually news of this great evil spread to the town ta from town to town until it reached the ears of Richter the Crack. He polished his sword and gathered some crumbs of bread to store in his mug. Wearing his best expression of courage, Richter once again set off to conquer the day. The story was not yet over. But for now, dear reader, return to our own lives. So let this tale with one so let us end this tale with one closing thought, shall we? Be we cracked or small or even dead, there's always a purpose to where we are led. Be brave and strong, unless we forget, but it isn't quite done with any of us just yet. Oh my god, that was awful. Did you have any questions? Why did you give me that awful book? Is it always night here? It's always dark, if that's what you mean. For as long as I can remember. Are you very old? No. As far as I understand it, I'm something quite new. Although, I didn't turn out the way I was supposed to. One in a long line of failed experiments. But Wilson will keep trying. And do you trust Wilson? <sighs> this is the realm of the Ink Demon. The shadow hangs over us all. I don't trust anyone. But... Wilson takes care of me, keeps me safe. Uh -huh. He once said I remind him of something he called his mother. Yeah. Me, is that a good thing, where you two are from? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think I ever had one. Well, no matter. Now, I, I was told to make sure you get some sleep once you got here. So get nice and comfy and relax. I left something on the table that might just help you nod off. It's my own recipe. Works very fast. Just follow the instructions. Carefully. Thanks, Betty. Mm -hmm. Of course. If you need anything else, I'll come straight away. I'm always up. Gilson. What's a Gilson? Gilson? No toilet paper. Oh, yeah. I feel like I had to do it. Oh, hmm. Does, does ink come out of here or what?
Hey. The machine speaks to me, revealing its many possibilities. What I can accomplish using its power is beyond any measure. Life and death can become a thing of the past. Poverty and hunger, a distant memory. I can I don't think so. Alan Gray. Yeah, okay, I'm... Well, that didn't tell me anything. Pretty much, right? This? Well, that didn't tell me anything. Yep, basically. Fisherman Jeb's... The Gilson fish. Strange little fish that is hard to come by. The Gilson is not known to be easy to catch and will ignore most bait. To make matters worse, the Gilson can move very fast, making it a rare sight. In the end, I was able to snatch up it was school out with a clever solution. Apparently the Gilson is sensitive to sound vibrations and will go into shock upon hearing some sweet music. So crank up the tunes and the fish will be easy to grab. Okay. So I'm looking for a fish. There's gotta be one here somewhere. I kind of don't like this because it feels like it's just... Well, oh, here's... That's a fish. Maybe if it was closer. Ugh, he's too fast. Here's the fish. Maybe there's something else that can make sound. I don't know. Interesting. Oh, derp, derp, derp.
Kamada Rondom Like it said music Oh cool <laughs> this is kinda fun. Dogs playing poker. They got what looks like a lab there and probably this was what looks like a corgi. That might be a chocolate lab, not like a yellow lab. I'm not sure though. Uh Here's my problem with this whole fish thing, like... Yeah, do some music, okay. I get, like, conceptually what they're trying to get me to do. But, um... I'm gonna be easy to catch and we'll ignore most bait. Very fast. I mean, I cranked up the tunes! They don't really give you anything more specific than that. Do I have to play the music first before I even try and grab or else I just can't grab it? If so, that's a really shitty game design, but this game is not as good with so, design as the last one was. A fish? There's gotta be one here somewhere. Now that's a fish. Maybe if it was closer. Principle, I'm loading this new one up. Why? I said it was closer, kind of assumed, kind of stupidly on my part, admittedly, that I was talking not about the piano, but about the fish. As far as I can even move this stupid thing. That did it. it looks like the fish is asleep. Gotcha. Sorry, fishy. Get away from me, you little stinker. <clears throat> uh, hello. I, uh, uh, forgot the Gilson again, didn't I? And there's some already ground up in the kitchen, too. Uh, um, I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up to your room straight away, shall I? <laughs> oh, and, uh, maybe you could put Harold back in his tank. He does so hate the dry air. Poor fishy. Like... They managed to make this the most, like, just so contrived is the issue. Now, just three sips of water. Water. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. <gasps> You're not the good angel. Crap, 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 crap. Just a 
It's all right, honey. I understand. It's not every day one gets to bask in the glory of the angel. Angel? <laughs> Alice Angel, to be exact. That's who I am. Sent from above. Impending perfection. What do you want? <sighs> right to the chase. I like that. The truth is, honey. Honey. You're one of a kind. Well, thank and you. To put it bluntly, okay, Two Face. What I want is your face removed, your skin peeled away like paper, and your insides torn out and tossed onto my table. Custom parts ready for my delicious heart. For now, let's have fun. Plenty of time for a bloodbath later. Ooh, how about a game? Let's all play a game of riddles. Riddles? Okay. <gasps> what a wonderful idea. No. <laughs> all right, honey. Here's the deal. Behind you is the door to freedom. But it will only be opened if you solve my little puzzle and return to your special chair. Then I'll throw this heavenly switch here. If you get the puzzle right, you walk away. Get it wrong, you fry. Let's begin. Okay. Great. Hey, what's up? Monkey, pig, bunny, bird. Uh, I have no idea why any of those would be in any order, so I guess I got to go back down and look around. He likes to court danger by sitting next to the fox. The fox has always hated the bear. They never sit next to each other. My friend the bear always sits next to the bird. After all, they went to school together. Okay. The bear, bird, fox. The pompous fox? Oh, he, he wouldn't be caught dead sitting on the left. Far too pedestrian. Uh huh. The rabbit never sits with the bird, but he loves the playful company of the bear. Rabbit, bear, bird, fox? The fox thinks the rabbit smells of elderberry. Rabbit, bear, bird, fox sounds like what it is. Bear, bird, fox. What? 
What? <laughs> Again. All right, let's try that again. The bird won't have anything to do with the rabbit, but I hear he likes to court danger. Bird won't go next to rabbit. Next to fox. Oh, fox won't be on the left. I'm stupid. I think... Wait. How do I get... How do I get... Rabbit. I think I was thinking, oh, left or right now. No, it's this from this way. Yeah. like a jerk. I didn't mean for it to become a trolley problem here. She hey, a gent pipe. How was Let me see if I go up here first real quick. Guess that'll extend out or something. Am I going to see the good Alice again, maybe? Did something open up up here or what? Oh, that's what happened. Got my power. Did I have a power back now or was that early? Oh! <clears throat> that's the thing that was making so I couldn't use my powers. So I should be able to... I guess this isn't usable yet. That is so unfair, Alice. Except Henry, apparently. Damn psycho.
I got powers, biatch. Alright, I guess I have to unlock this. I can't go that way. I tried to fight. You're hiding behind that locked door. You ain't got shit. Come out wherever you are. Guess time to charge up this thing again. Where did you go? <laughs> I can do this all day. Of course you can. You have no life because you're ugly. I'm the one that's hiding. Where do you think you're going? Are you hiding from me? Oh, that's precious. I got what's the other one supposed to go though? Greek of Ink Demon. And where else can I go? this though Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna go see your mom I'm gonna go looks like everyone else has already Are you hiding from me oh, that's precious. Gotcha! I don't wanna go <laughs> Come on, game. Where did you go? Ah! <laughs> I can do this all day. Like, <laughs> maybe you go back out. Maybe I missed some. Sh can I even go back out? 
No, I can't even go back out. I think I know what I need to do. I think. Come out, come out wherever you are. You freak the stage demon. Where do there we you go. Know you're going? Ah, there you are. Are you hiding from me? Boxes. I can step on boxes. So can I just sneak up behind her and use my ability? bullets again give me a comment Fisted, that is. Alice, I cannot begin to tell you how good it is to see you. And this must be your wolf. Audrey, meet Tom. Or He's my protector. My friend. You both got here just in time. Now I understand why you don't like being called Alice. The machine creates many of the same forms. At least on the outside. On the inside, we're all pretty different. Well, from now on, I'm going to call you something other than Alice. It just doesn't suit you. Oh, what do you have in mind? Angel. How about... Allison? It's not bad. Okay, I'll try it out. But only if you can tell me what in heaven's name you're doing in Wilson's retreat. Wilson, I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. I have to get back right away. Are you crazy? Wilson's our enemy. Do you even know him? Have you ever talked to him? I've seen what he's done. <clears throat> That's good enough for me. Look, it sounds like he has a plan to kill the ink demon. <clears throat> for good. And I think he can help us all. I just... I just need to go back and hear him out. Well, if it's true, you'll both need as much help as you can get. The ink demon won't go down without a fight. Tom and I will gather some of our friends. Anyone who's left. Good luck, Audrey. You too, Allison. Mind if I take this? I mean, I could use that too. Ha <laughs> ha.
Beautiful people run this world. If you can have brains or talent, you may just sneak through the gates. With a pretty face, every door opens. The crowds bow to you. <clears throat> they ask your name, they want you to attend. They ask you to speak. A silky voice with gorgeous lips is everyone's weak spot. I was reborn with my perfection stolen from me. Get back, I'll rip this rotted world apart. Angels are beautiful. Angels are beautiful. Alice Angel. Without Wilson, without my powers, these things are a huge threat. I have no idea how dumb these things are when it comes to hiding spots. Where the hell am I? Okay. It's been years and my face is still a mystery to my co-workers. They don't know me. They avoid me as if I carried some infectious disease. Just have to wait for this asshole to just go then, huh? Charge up.
Dear Alice, I don't know if you will read these notes, but I'll keep leaving them for you. I hope someday you'll understand my words and the madness will fade from your mind. In the strange and dark place, we can find light and purpose. <clears throat> you are not left to just wander alone, craving beauty, power, and other meaningless things. Even the heart of someone feeling incomplete can discover joy. We are not lost, we are merely waiting to be found. We are so much alike. Born from the same mold, we're like sisters, you and me. I wish you comfort and the wisdom to let your heart melt into happiness. I won't go up trying to reach you before it's too late. A friend. <sighs> Another memory. This music box could make a good distraction if I can fix it. Oh, there we go. They said he killed my lord. They said the ink demon fell. They said I was a false prophet. But I say my lord lives. But I say he will return. But I say you better watch your back, Mr. Wilson. Can I get an amen? Crap. Ouch. Fuck. Okay, um, honestly, just quit. The last load was fine, load time. Main menu. Alright, I'll be on Overwatch soon. Uh, remember to like, follow, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.